Okay guys, so we're going to be modeling the honeycomb that you saw in the intro. So first let's grab a cylinder. And let's turn rotation segments down to 6 to make it a hexagon. And we're going to scale it down. When we render this, we want it to be close to life size so everything calculates right. So next up we want to make our cylinder editable so that we can create an interior. So select all the top polygons, inset, and let's extrude down. And we don't need to go crazy here, but just add some loops. We really don't need to be too careful on this part because later we're going to have the cloner and we're going to be able to scale everything up. So these small details won't be apparent. Okay, and now let's make some loop selections and add a small bevel. Let's just keep something small and let's up to subdivision so we get something smoother and zoom out to check it's looking okay. We don't need to worry too much about the other edges because we're not going to be able to see them at the end when we put it in the cloner. So let's grab the cloner now and our setting is going to be set to honeycomb. It's going to work the best, obviously. And let's put our width and height segments way down. And change our axis. So now we just want to line these up. It might take a little bit of plane to get it just right. And now let's up our count massively. So now let's grab a plane. And we want to work out how we can use this to reduce and make it look more organic. And we're going to use a MoGraph selector. So let's grab MoGraph selector, turn up the radius, and just paint around the outside. The reason we want to do it this way is so we can get immediate fall off. We want to scale up the, all of these down to negative one immediately. So drag in our selection. And we also need to go to cloner and make sure that our plane effector is inside. And under parameter, we change scale to negative one. And this is how we can get this cutout effect. And this is going to work much better and make everything look more organic. Next up, if you look at honeycomb references, you'll often see it looks like it has two sides. So we're going to duplicate the cloner, but we want to have a different look for the back to make things look more natural. So we'll grab a second plane and we'll relink it to cloner one and organize everything into nulls. And let's drag in the plane one. And now let's get a new MoGraph selection and ball paint again. You can turn your radius up and down depending on how much detail you want to preserve, but I'm just going to do a quick job here. Obviously, when you're doing a final version, you want to spend more time getting the look exactly right. So let's turn our plane back on and we just need to change the parameter from position to scale and negative one so it deletes itself. So there's a good starting point for us. Next, we want to work out how we can populate some honey inside this. And we have a straightforward solution for this. So let's grab these nulls and connect objects plus delete. And now we can use a volume builder and volume measure. Now, depending on your scale, you'll need to play with different values here. But I know, first of all, I need to reduce the voxel size down so we get a more detailed view. So let's try one. And then we can use SDF smooth and dilation erode and close and open to get a good final output. You can change the offset to change the level of detail in the shape. And there's no reason why we can't stack these. I will say if you stack too many, you will lose all of the detail and it won't look quite as nice. So make sure not to overdo it here. And you can always turn the strength down if needed. So we can turn our nulls back on and that's looking good, but I want to fit this volume builder a little bit closer. So let's turn our strength down so we get a little bit closer to the shape. I just want a hint of honey peeking through. Brilliant. Now let's put this all inside a null so it's easy to reposition. And I'm going to flip this 90 degrees for our final shot. Now let's work on the drips. Grab a sphere and a cloner and change our type to linear and make a sphere the child of the cloner. And now let's increase our count a little bit and our Y spacing. For this drop to work, we also want to play with our scale. So let's put this down to 95 and now we can see we can start to get this fall off effect which looks quite nice. And now all we need to do is play with this to get it looking closer to how we want it. Something like that might do. Let's make a rough position and scale it as appropriate. And now let's get our volume builder and volume mesher. And we can make a clone of the child. And now we need to change our voxel size. If you don't see anything, it means that the voxel size is too big and it's not calculating anything. So you just put that down. Last of all, we can play with our parameters again to get the look we're going for. And we can also add in smoothing and other effects to get the drip looking just right. Let's also take the sphere for some added drop detail at the bottom. It doesn't need to be much, but you often see this larger drop at the bottom. So I think something like that is going to work quite nicely. 
To make it look less like spheres, you can also play with this overall smoothing and positioning of the spheres to get it just right. Now here, I want to offset the honeycomb to add interest, but I want to make sure that I keep the drip on the Y angle. If the drip isn't heading towards gravity, then it's going to look really super unrealistic. It's also important to think about how we're going to blend these together, but because these are going to be transparent, I think that's going to work well, at least for what we need. Obviously, it's possible to add in more of these, but today I think we're going to go for one big drop. If you caught the original post on my Instagram, I think for this R&D shot, I used two drops to begin with, so there's no reason you can't duplicate and change the parameters. Let's grab a redshift camera, and we're going to up the focal length, because I think a higher focal length is going to work well for this shot. And let's open up our render view, and switch over to redshift. And let's dock it so we can see what's going on. Okay, so next let's grab some area light so we can start some basic lighting. And I'm also going to grab a target tag because this makes setting up lights super fast. It means that wherever we put the light, if the target tag is working correctly, we don't need to worry about positioning it so it's hitting our object. So this makes R&D much faster. So I want this right on the edge of the honeycomb so that we get some contrast between the lip of each comb and the center. As you can see, um, it makes it look a lot grittier. And I'm going to grab another one and maybe position it at the back of the shot just to give us a bit of backlighting. This is also going to work really well later when we use SSS because it means that we're going to have lots of light shining through the outside. It's going to give us some interesting color. And let's change our aspect ratio to 2000 by 2000, which is a good setup for Instagram, and reposition our shot. Sorry if this is all over the place, but this is normally how works go for me. I'll do a little bit of lighting, a little bit of texturing, a little bit of scene setup, and it's just playing with each part as you go, and thinking about what the most important next step is. So now that we have some standard materials, let's drag them onto our objects to begin with, and we can go right in and work on our SSS first. So this is the best way. So I think wax plastics is good for SSS because it lets light penetrate through and bounce all inside. So we want to turn our weight up to one and then we can change our color to influence what happens to the light once it bounces. Okay, so now let's copy paste this in. So we can use this brown color as a starting point for the SSS. So we have SSS color and radius. So color is like the base color and radius is like what happens to the light after it starts bouncing on inside, I believe. And in this case, we don't need to play with our scale at all. I think that's going to work pretty well for us. And obviously you can play with these colors all day and on the project I did, but let's just set this up really quickly. So let's work on to our next piece. And this is going to be a transparent material that's going to act as our honey. And I'm not going to think about the colors too much, but I know we want transmission reflection. And I know the scatter color wants to be something lighter as well. So it's always good in materials never to use exactly the same one. So I think I'll switch that up a little bit and also make sure that the scatter color is nice and light because we want that golden look for the honey. The IOR of honey is a little bit difficult as well. It can range from 1.35 to 1.6. So just play with the scene and see what seems right for you guys. We did a pretty good job on the honey, I think. It was nice and fast, but I really want a dark look in this render. Obviously, if you want a more golden look, you can just bump up the colors as needed or increase the lighting. So now I'm adding in one more light and that's because we can't see our honey drip that well. So I want to try to add a little bit more there. And you can see we're picking up some reflections on the drop, but not quite enough. I also want to make sure that I don't go too hard on the bottom side. Let's see if a repositioning can give us a better look. Okay, let's grab a dome light. I'm going to use an HDR from Grayscale Gorilla. And these metal ones are great. They're just these black and white painted maps that give some really nice reflections. And it can just help us add that last 5% here. So I'm going to lighten up that reflection color a tad, as well as the transmission color, just to get a slightly more golden look. And I'm just going to snap the background off as we have enough reflections now. Finally, let's grab a null and we're going to use this as our focus point. So let's put it to the start, right on the front face of the honeycomb. 
and this is a really nice easy way to add a tad more realism when you need it so we'll put in our null and turn on our bokeh and turn on the aperture to something smaller and because the object is quite well aligned even with two we're not going to get a whole lot of fuzz or blur but it just adds a little bit and if we went to different angles we could get a lot more you can check out my instagram post if you want to see what more depth of field would look like i think i added a couple in but i think that's almost us for today so you see at the end once we added some more lights in the hdri the bottom drip cleaned up a little bit and we got some interesting reflections and refractions going on there and i'm happy with the whole look right now if we worked on this for a longer time we could think about adding in some more lights to try light up more of the honeycomb but i think just like that it's going to do fine so i hope you guys found this interesting and enjoyable and any tips or suggestions for new videos please let me know over on instagram and i'll see you in the next one cheers